What's up, everybody? Today, I want to talk about the single most important part of sound in a post-production workflow, and that is sync. Without sync, you could have the greatest sound libraries and the greatest sound effects and the greatest dialogue in the world, and it wouldn't matter because it's not going to be in sync with picture or with other sounds in your sessions. So if you don't have sync, it's obviously going to cause a lot of problems. I want to talk about a few instances where those problems can crop up and a very easy and simple way to avoid them. Before we get started, if you enjoy these videos, you want to support my channel, head on over to alexnickerbacher.com where I've got a bunch of different sound effects libraries that are royalty-free, curated from my personal collection for your use on any project. You'll find everything from transitions and sound design to ambiences and backgrounds, even really specific foley like footsteps, cloth movements, and more. I've also got a professional post-production mixing template built out for Pro Tools, or if you want to learn how to build your own templates in any software using major studio concepts, you can check out my course on how to build a professional mixing template up on Udemy at the links in the description. You can also donate if you'd like. Anything really helps me spend more time on this channel sharing major studio ideas and concepts with everyone. All right, let's talk about sync. I can't tell you how many times I've started receiving assets for a project, whether it's from a picture editor or another sound editor who's tuning something over for a mix, and I've started listening back to everything, looking at picture and thinking, this doesn't quite line up. What's going on here? Best case scenario on a simple project, maybe the picture file is a couple of frames out of sync with the rest of the audio session, and all you need to do is move one of those two things into sync again by three or four frames, and everything comes back together, it all works totally fine. Worst case scenario, you're on a major feature film on a theatrical dub stage paying thousands of dollars an hour to get everything done to the best standard that the entire world has to offer, and somebody says, oh, wait a minute, that dialogue line looks a little bit soft. Is that actually in sync? Well, is the rest of the dialogue in sync? Well, is something wrong with the film? And suddenly you're tracing every little tiny needle in a haystack situation trying to figure out what went wrong and if anything else went wrong on top of that. And instead of doing the creative work of mixing or editing or any of the other things that go into these big workflows, you're trying to chase down if something happened in the initial deliverables or turnovers and trying to figure out who might have done it and why it happened and unravel this whole mess of stuff that shouldn't even be called into question that late in the game. These kinds of problems can crop up on even the most most refined and well-oiled workflows, not just because of human error, but because there are plenty of different programs that don't handle things quite right, or maybe some specific nuance happened in an export that one box was left unchecked by accident and something happens that causes a sync drift across the entire project. This kind of stuff can also happen on projects that shoot at one frame rate, edit at a different frame rate, and then deliver at a third frame rate for any number of reasons. I've worked on a lot of animated pieces that they'll actually work in true 24 frame per second second animation, but that animation needed to be exported at 23.976 for actual broadcast and distribution. The good news is there's generally a very simple and straightforward way to prevent most sync issues from occurring across a workflow, and that is the use of a two pop and a tail pop. A two pop and a tail pop are specifically used to make sure that sound stays in sync from the very beginning of a session, the very beginning of picture, all the way through the end of it. So what are two pops and tail pops? They are literally just one single frame of one kilohertz tone. A two pop is that one frame of one kilohertz tone two seconds before the actual start of your content or the first frame of action. A tail pop is exactly the same thing, but two seconds after the end of the rest of your content. So it's the very, very last sound that should occur in any timeline. A two pop is the very first sound that should occur in any timeline as far as sync is concerned. The important thing with a two pop and tail pop is that they're accompanied by a visual reference in picture. So a two pop has some sort of visual reference that's one frame long, two seconds before the first frame of action, and the tail pop has another visual reference that's one frame long, exactly two seconds after the last frame of action. Having those two things in place is going to give you the confidence that whatever might have occurred in between those two things is deliberately in sync or it's deliberately out of sync. And it was a creative choice or maybe human error rather than some technical glitch that's going to screw up the rest of a workflow. The other really important component for sync in the post-production world is timecode burn-in on video. That's just 
almost a running clock of how much time has elapsed since pictures started and where everything is in time. And it makes it much, much easier to communicate when certain things need to happen, making sure everything is in sync from a frame or even a sample accuracy standpoint, and really just dialing in a workflow so that there's no question of when something might need to occur in sound or whether it's in sync with picture. Every timeline in every video editing software has some kind of time code display, and it makes it really easy to figure out when something needs to occur or how long a project is or really anything that involves a question of time. There's also a really simple way generally to burn that time code onto picture whenever you're exporting out of something like Premiere or Avid or DaVinci Resolve. Time code is counted in four numbers, hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And it's really important because it's a standard in kind of the major workflows that time code relates in a very specific way to a two pop. And that gives you a hard start mark, hard visual reference, hard time reference, and it's standardized across every workflow that you're going to encounter when it comes to picture. The time code that a two pop should happen at is zero hours, 59 minutes, 58 seconds, and zero frames. That means that your first frame of action occurs at exactly one hour in time code, which is really useful across a lot of different projects, mostly in the feature film world where you've got the real workflow still and features are divvied up into five or six or seven different sessions so that you can actually manage all that content. Reel one is the first section of the project, all the way up through reel six or reel seven being the final section and the end of the film. Using that workflow, that way there's no question about what reel you're on, what point in the project that you're at. And again, you can use that time code reference and that two pop reference for each of those sections so that everything stays in sync across hours and hours worth of content. It's also super useful in the television workflow when you've got maybe 20 or 30 different episodes of television in a single session, so you can pull sound effects and keep continuity between different episodes. And you can say episode one is at one hour, episode two is at two hours, etc., etc. Also from a creative standpoint, if you've got a really long intro or a long outro on a project where maybe sounds are supposed to fade in a little bit or nothing's supposed to be occurring sonically until a certain point, it can be pretty hard to figure out where picture and where sound are really supposed to start. So having a two pop, having time code, having that one hour hard start mark of a first frame of action is really important for that. And it can answer a lot of questions that shouldn't even have to be asked in the first place, but are on plenty of projects anyway. In any case, no matter what kind of work on what kind of content you're doing, having a session start mark and knowing that everything is going to be in sync from the get go can solve a lot more problems before they even occur. Because the last thing that you want to do, especially again in the major workflows, is have a director or a producer or an editor sitting there on a huge motion picture stage saying, well, wait, is that is that still in sync? Was anything else in sync? Was everything out of sync? Well, we have to tear the entire project apart to make sure that this is actually all correct, because if one thing's wrong, everything else could be wrong too. So I hope this video was helpful. And again, I think sync is probably the most important component of sound for picture. And if you have the greatest sound library in the world, if it's out of sync, it really isn't gonna matter. If you enjoyed, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe. I'm over on Instagram at AXK, so come follow me over there. Comment below with any questions you might have. And as always, thanks for watching.